We have a very interesting guest uh, joining us for this last segment. We'll just get right into it because uh, we're going to try and get you some pictures and show you everything. Uh, her <laughs> name is Jessica Beal. You're a teacher at Spring Mills. Correct. For, for the Cardinals, right? Yes. And you were recently featured in, in the newspaper. The journal. The journal. Uh, regarding a project you do, so I'm just going to let, like, let you explain what you did for your kids at Spring Mills. Okay, so throughout the year, they've done and looked at um, forensics evidence and how to analyze it um, in the lab, and they've been learning about how... And this, is a, this is a class, a, a forensics class within Spring Mills? Yeah, so okay. it's a science elective that okay. you get lab credit for to graduate. Um, there's a lot of interest in it, and it's looking at crime, evidence, how to solve a case. So I figured to end the year, they're looking at entomology and the bugs and how they evolve in their life cycle um, and we covered how bodies decompose so to really get a grasp on the real world science aspect of it and what do forensic scientists do I set up a lab outside um, so we got five fetal pigs from a lab vendor that we go through with the school um, we put one pig out in the elements just exposed to everything to see how that decomposes without any factors involved um, we buried one slightly with some grass on top of it we had one that was in water one that was in a closed in container and one wrapped in a tarp so that they could see how the bugs are attracted, how does the body break down, um, and just see how those factors affect. Because when you go to a crime scene, those are all the things that you have to take into account when you're trying to figure out how long has the body been there and what happened to it. So let's go through the different scenarios. Which, what were the differences? Because you know, I'm, in, I'm interested in the actual facts. What were the different um, time times that the, that it went to? What were the different scenarios that the so we We've started gained. We started on the 26th of April, and that week was very cold. Um, so they were able to see there were a couple bugs that came, um, and they could see how the bodies would slowly decompose without heat being a factor. Um, then it started to speed up, and it was like almost instant. They could see the, the flies starting to come. Then they would see the larva and the eggs. Um, then they could see those hatch into their baby pupa. Um, and then they would just watch it progress. So as you've got some maggots maturing, you've got more being laid and it's just a constant cycle. Um, they would start to devour the body. I know it sounds morbid, but the kids are really fascinated. Well, they, it's, it's life, isn't it? It, yeah. it is. Yeah. And they've Jack never had the chance to see it up close and personal. So there are some that, you know, shied away, but they got to see, we have beetles, so I brought some maggots. Um, you can see the different maggots. And they, last week I took them out and they collected the bugs off of yeah. the bodies, just like they would do as a forensic scientist. So they have fuming chambers um, so that they can preserve them and look at them. Jessica, let me go back. To, uh, I think we, we skipped it at first. You teach where? At Spring Mills High School. Spring Mills High School. And what, what grades? It's 11th and 12th 11th grades. 11th 12th. And approximately how many students do you have in your class? Approximately 180. Now, this is pretty... <laughs> it's, it's not typical. Not typical what you get in the classroom. How do your students respond? Um, well, first, I went to admin to get the approval. They've been in okay, full yeah. support. Um, they, I've been warning the students from day one, like it was in my syllabus, you're going to see some things. Um, when it got to this project, I knew I was starting in April, so I've been kind of pepping them up since before Christmas, letting them know it's coming. There are a few that chose not to do it, and I gave them an alternate assignment. They didn't have to participate in any way. There were some kids that went out there, and they were kind of grossed out at first, but now that it's been a couple of weeks, they're getting closer and closer, and they're just interested and fascinated by the process. But and it stinks, doesn't it? It is starting to stink, <laughs> yes. And they're out there with their shirts. Like last week, they collected the bugs, and even though it stunk, they put their shirts over their nose, and they right. were into it. And they're, they're baby pigs. Too. Correct. They're fetal, they're fetal pigs, pigs. That, that you would dissect. So, I mean, yes, they, they stink, but it's not. We, we did an elephant. Back yeah. it when I was young, it was absolutely oh, wow. amazing. Yeah. yeah, we got to walk around inside it, and the maggots all falling all over you. It was crazy. I assume you're putting this in kind of an analytical framework that you're comparing one against the other. Yes. What role does, do the students play? Do they have to do an analysis of a uh, of, of the different decomposition rates? So they have a packet that they go out. They yeah. have their groups, so they're in lab groups, and every day they have to write what do they observe with the body? What changes are you observing? What kind of insect 
activity is there? What is the temperature of the day? Um, what's the time of the day? So they'll be doing that every class period. So we're on block scheduling. So every other day they go out and look and they talk to each other about it. And like I said last week, they actually went and collected the bugs just like you would do as a forensic scientist so that they could see the real world aspect of it. And a lot of them are interested and they're like, hey, this is what I want to do. And it's solidified for a lot of them that this is not what I want to do. So it allows them to kind of get that experience that they wouldn't get anywhere else. Well, you can, I think you can, we can expect the results that the out in the wild, out in the outdoors, the decompose quicker. Uh, what about the other th four steps? So the one that was wrapped in the tarp actually started to decompose first. Exactly. Just because it's constantly wrapped, it's like a greenhouse effect. Um, so as the body is liquefying, which is one of the stages of decomposition that they learned about, it's everything's in this in this wrapped up container and it's just heated by the sun. So that was the first to start to decompose. Um, then you do have the pig that's exposed to the elements. He started to go quickly because he's just sitting out in the sun. Um, the next one to start was probably the one that was half buried. So he, some of the kids were like, well, shouldn't that go just as bad or as fast as the one sitting out? But the grass shades him. The smell's got to come up and out of the hole to attract the bugs. It kind of shades from the sun. Um, so he has started decomposing. And then the one in the box, he was the longest because I taped up all the holes. But the insects still find a way in there. Um, so... I went there yesterday and there's, you've seen the pictures, there's not much left of most of them. So the bugs have done their job um, in decomposing the body and... So yeah. just different bugs in the water? Yeah. Correct. We had um, flies. So the only way you can really tell the difference between maggots is if you take them back, look at the microscope. So I showed them, there's a Dirty Jobs episode where they actually do that. So they got to see what the next step is this. Um, but they collected maggots. They've collected, um, there's blow flies in here. They have hyster beetles, skin beetles. So your flies are going to feast on the soft tissues of the body where the beetles come in and they do the cartilage in the harder parts of the bodies. So your students are exposed in part to biology, obviously. Correct. Anatomy to some degree. Correct. Physics, chemistry. Yes. What else? Um, it's pretty much all the sciences. All the sciences. So yes. yeah, Except geology. Um, well, then you can look at different things that you find on the body, whether it's sand, okay. um, dirt. So there is a geology aspect yeah. to forensics. Yeah. So forensics is kind of like an all-in-one encompassing everything, and they get to do all of these and play all these roles in the class. And this is what you try, you try to uh, <coughs> show the students, that it's not isolation. You have to look at the total picture. Correct. Yeah. How it do you keep the buzzards book. from taking them away? Um, so we have or is that would, part of the process. I mean, it, it is normally, um, but I think because it's in a school area, it's out in our backfield where we have raised planter beds. Um, so there's traffic, so I think that scares them off. But I did go to the Dollar Tree buy like clear containers that have holes to put on them in bricks, and then we have pallets that we put them on at night. That way, nobody yet has messed with them. Those scavengers. However, if they were in a field, yes, you would have buzzards. You know, one of the great mysteries. I was a firefighter and EMT for two decades, and. And I've seen the human versions of these on more times than, I, than I'd like. In in a closed house where somebody has passed, and where does the first fly come from? Because there are a bunch of them when they show up. Even you don't have to be outside for it. It happens inside too. So so as your body, as you cease to exist, so your li your cells in your body start to explode, and your body will start to produce these scents from cadavering, putrescine. They're just these death scents that attract these flies. So they're gonna find it, they'll get in whatever crack they can. Um, blow flies are usually the most abundant. They like to lay their larva and their eggs into a decomposing body because that's what provides them nutrients to reproduce. So that's what you usually have the most of. This is a far removed from my days of just dissecting the frog, which is the same frog I guess everybody dissected <laughs> at the time. Uh, are other folks following the syllabus? Uh, or did you develop this, or you, uh, or is it designed national? Where did you get it from? Um, so years ago, I took a pork loin that I bought at the store and put it under a trash bag and let it decompose in my house, just because in our content standards for forensics, we have to look at the life cycle of blowflies. Um, so I just thought it was like more of a real world way of getting them instead of just buying them from a lab. Um, and then I noticed this year, Nebraska Scientific, who is a company that goes through one of our lab vendors, had this kit. It's like decompose, uh, decomposition of fetal pigs. And when you buy pigs to dissect, they're embalmed. These are not. 
they are frozen with their blood in so that they will decompose. And the reason we use pigs is because their anatomy is similar to humans and they decompose as close to a human as we can get. Have you had your fellow teachers in the area uh, contact you about duplicating? I have not. No, okay. um, as far as I know, I don't know of any of the other high schools yeah. in the county doing this specific project. Um, but I have had teachers in the building come out and look and they're like, oh, this is so gross, but it's kind of cool. And one of my yeah. students, if you looked at the title on the newspaper, it was morbidly fascinating. I had a student a couple of days in is like, this is so horrible, but it's like, it's just morbidly fascinating. So I can't take credit for it. He just, it's, yeah. It's so real world, something that we tend to walk past or ignore. It's, uh, it's a, it is. Well done. And, and it allows them to play the role of a crime scene, yeah. you know, see what's out there. Is this something they want to pursue? Is this not something they want to pursue? So this is the final project of a larger course? Correct. Correct. And it's been a year long since September? Correct. So what else have they studied? Has it got into blood spatter? Is it called forensics? Is that the name of the, the course? Yes, forensic science. So they've done um, analyzing hair samples, fibers, blood spatter. So the, with the blood spatter, they'll look at the angle at which it hits a wall and they'll actually use trig. Kids are always like, I'm never going to use trig. Yeah. No, they were using trigonometry to calculate the angle at which they hit the wall so they could find the area of convergence and where the person was. Um, they've done fingerprints. They enjoyed the fingerprints. They've lifted fingerprints using different powders and different methods. Um, so I've tried to give them all of the methods that you are available out in the real world as a forensic scientist so they can get their hands on and actually do it and actually perform the test and use chemistry and use physics and use geology and all these sciences where some kids are just like, I don't like science, but this is what you can do with it and yeah. get them excited and sparked in the science. Now, what training did you have? Um, I have a degree in chemistry. I mm -hmm. went to Shepherd. Um, I have a master's to teach, and I've just always been interested in forensics. Yeah. It's just always been, I've always watched the crime shows, and it's just fascinating how they can solve cases and piece everything together and what you can actually get from a crime scene. Does the student get any credit for college credit for this course? They do not. They do not. How do, how do you get that? move forward um that, that's to talk with one of the universities to see if like we do have college biology and yeah. there is college it's just a matter of getting with the university and getting that set up so that they can earn credit yeah i think this would be a, a specifically this course would be a fantastic opportunity for kids to start getting some of those college credits it, it seems like it's very practical i i agree and i've worked with um a, teacher at WVU when we did our blood spatter training he had a course and he is very easy to talk to very willing it's just a matter of putting all the pieces together to get to work out and how much control do you have as a teacher to get that done is it is it possible for you to do it or do you need the powers that be to to kind of step up and say this is what we need to be doing it's more the powers of be. Like I would go to my guidance counselors and the admin who can then take it to the board and then they talk with the university to get that set up if it's possible. Now, like how many years you, have you been teaching some form of forensics in, uh, in high school? Um, it's about eight years. Okay, so a lot of the popularity of a course or teacher is word of mouth. And uh, what is the growth, what is the interest of your students today as it was eight years or so ago? Um, so I started as a chemistry teacher. That's why I was hired on because I had yeah. a degree in chemistry and I had two classes of forensic science. It was just, hey, can you teach this? Sure. Um, that grew to three and then it grew to four. And then now here about seven and a half, eight years later, I'm at seven classes. And so 100 plus students, you say. And you said it's elective? It is an elective. And you have seven. Choose. Yeah. So all these kids are choosing it. Correct. And they're choosing it more and more every year. Correct. Sounds like a successful program. Sounds we need good, to get yeah. yeah. So <laughs> these, these, these pigs are handled by 150 kids a day? Well, they look at them. They don't touch them. Okay, so they're not <laughs> gathering the bugs and doing it. They, they did that last week as a one-time thing. Um, so they got to experience it. If they wanted to, they could. But other than that, they're just going out and looking. They're not actually physically What touching. percentage say no, roughly? I've had two students. Really? Yes. Two mm -hmm. students that were like, absolutely not. I don't want to go look at this. There are students that come out and they'll just look and then they walk away. And that's fine. But they're still exposed to it. And then I've got other students that just dive in and they're all for it. And the academic component to this, we go and we look and then go back to the classroom. And what, what are the kids then doing with this information? Are they writing reports? Are they doing... No, so because it's the end of the year project, I just wanted to look, they want to send to the reserve. We talk about what they see. Um, 
and what they notice. Um, they had a post lab report to write up like which one attracted the most insects? Why do you think that is? Which one attracted the least insects? Why do you think that is? How does weather play a role in decomposition and the different stages that they see? So they've already learned about the different stages. Now they can actually see the different stages in real life. I suspect after the journal article and today's show, you're going to have a lot of your fellow <laughs> teachers approaching you say, can we borrow your syllabus? It's possible. Yeah. And I'll tell you the other aspect to it is we have a teacher at my school who just got done with Gothic horror in her English class. So those kids have been reading about decomposition stuff. So they have come out and looked at the bugs. So it's, it's really open to anybody, and it's fascinating, and it applies to so much more than just science. And what I find so fascinating and lovely about this course is you know particularly for teenage boys i think it's not maybe girls too but f certainly for teenage boys this one when he was a teenager um the sciences and math those those are not as attractive that, that's not where i want to spend my time why do i need to know trigonometry for example to provide a course that actually gives practical reasons to use these sciences it would be you know if if i want to learn how to use a i don't know what science goes into using a sextant right or anything where you can you can handle a thing and you take the principles and you put them into a practical environment for me that's real learning you know and i've been all over this class i agree yeah. i think uh, anything that gets anybody interested in chemistry because <laughs> it, it it's it's tough to get you, you you either are in that super smart category that you, you can do it, but for the regular folks like me, getting into chemistry, something like this is fantastic because you can go, But huh. Yeah, and picking up on that, Mike, uh, what Jessica's done exposed 100 students plus of the of the attractiveness of science mm -hmm. and how science is not are not isolated. They work together. They're very much integrated. And so I'm confident several of your students come out of this with a totally different perspective of what science means to us. And it has a real life application as opposed to this more abstract theoretical view that a lot of folks try to carry into the science. I'm also encouraged that the administration allowed this to happen you know that had to be it has to be a unique combination of people to say sure we'll go ahead and put out baby pigs and let them rot and let kids look at it that's kind of a hard pull in well, some it, circumstances see, i had to go in front of we have you know a committee that we they have money set aside for projects so i had to get in front of the whole committee i asked you know to fund this project and mr salpy was great he's like that is so gross but it'll be an experience yeah and they were just when the tur you could hear the teachers when i'm explaining they're like "Ooh, this is gross <laughs> Ew, nasty. but they supported it and now they just i have teachers coming on they showed me the pictures the pig liquefied and this and that and it's just they're they're talking to more people in the building about it and exposing more people to this. All right, you said you needed fun. What is the what is the project like this cost you? Um, for five pigs, it was approximately three hundred dollars, and, wow. and it's not the pigs that cost yeah. the money; it's the shipping them frozen that costs the most money. So, and you have to probably get them from a certain supplier. Or Correct. You, you can just go down to the local supplier. farm. Correct. And yeah. I made sure to tell the kids, like, I did not these get down to farmer. <laughs> I got them through a lab-approved vendor, and these are, are not, they do not breed pigs yeah. just to kill them. They these, don't. these are ones for dissecting. And, Correct. Yeah, okay. But the important, the, the important point was they're not embalmed. Yeah. And so there's, again, real-life experience. They respond in the same way that forensic or anything else uh, that has died would respond. Yes. And there's also got to get past, my first thought, you, you brought some pictures that we were looking at, and the first one I looked at was like, oh, that's cute. You know, it's a, it's a baby pig, you know, and, and that had to be tough for some kids to get past. It is, and they're like, I had baby pigs that don't look. I said, you've got to look at this, this is science. It, it's strictly science. Do not think of it as Wilbur. It is science. <laughs> it happens all the time. Yeah. So. And it, it, it mostly, if you, you've ever been on a farm, it, it's not all butterflies and things that animals and babies die all the time right goats pigs you name it so um it's one of those things where i think it's a fantastic idea what kind of a when you said you were searching for a project what kind of resources do you have as a teacher that you can find some of these projects that can engage kids more because i feel like 
as children are, are, are growing up and we're, we're getting very much into the digital society, what um, other things or what places can you find um, other projects, if you will? Um, there's all kinds of sources on Facebook. They have groups for different kinds of teachers, different kinds of subjects. Um, the labs have gotten, over the seven years that I've taught, these labs have gotten better on the what they're offering through the lab supply company. So you can get a whole comprehensive lab that has everything in it um, to give unique opportunities other than what I can think of on my own. Um, and then cross-curricular talking to other teachers about things and you just gotta listen to the kids. Like when they come into the class, you know, it's like, it's always, are we gonna learn how to hide a dead body? No, you're not, but you're gonna learn how to process that evidence that you find from the body or yeah. you find from a crime scene. So all, all ages in high school did it? It, it's mostly 11th and 12th. I have okay. had some 10th graders in the past. It really depends on, so first they have to take, I think it's earth science and gotcha. biology. Those are required. Um, so Before if they, they double, can do the elective. Correct. If they double up on those early, then yeah, they can take more sciences. So this wouldn't be something you do every year. Is it something that you'd like to see done definitely, each and every year? Definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Because they, they, they can't, I'm guessing they can only take the forensics uh course once. Right? Yes, I, okay. I've had a student try to sign up for two years in a row. They're like, no, you've already got credit. You can't, you do, can't it do advanced, yes. yeah, advanced yes. forensic. I got the impression, Jessica, this was your idea. You did not go through a book of syllabus and borrow from someone else. This was your idea. Is that correct? It, it is. It, and like I said, I had the idea. And then when I found it on lab, I was like, yes, that's what I want. Yeah, there it yeah, is. That's yeah. what I've been wanting the whole time. Yeah. Well, we're getting several comments uh, on our Facebook, uh, and oh. all I'm saying, what great job, outstanding, well Appreciate done. It. It's so, for it's for the kids. It's yeah. like I'm passionate about science. I love science, yeah. and even if just one kid's like, I want to do this, then that's great. Yeah. And I think that's the key, right? Getting them engaged. Yes. So now that you've set the standard so high, what's the next project? What's the next great idea? Because we're gonna we're gonna ask you back <laughs> next year to show us your next uh, your right. next uh, super idea. Well, I mean. <laughs> That's one I have to go back and think about. But, like, with this project, I would have loved to have more pigs. Like, the kids are like, yeah, but what if one's hanging? And what if one... So there's different scenarios that we can do within this project. So, But what I see to be so interesting about this, so enlightening, is the integration of all the sciences together. And it gets away from this silo approach is so many people think that chemistry is independent of physics is independent of biology it's not you're demonstrating that all the sciences come together and you're doing again in real life solving a problem or so or looking at an issue that happens on a continual basis i agree Okay, I write thrillers, so my mind is going crazy with this thing. Um, you know, if, if, if we got to dissect pigs anyway, why not have, they're already dead, right? But have one that has been shot, one has been stabbed, one has been, you know, and then while you're dissecting, you're also doing autopsy, essentially, and, and tracking wound tracks and, and, and that sort of thing, you know, as, as the next step along the way. And then you go and you, right. and you let it rot. And That's a great <laughs> idea, too. <laughs> well, Jessica, we, we have to take a break, but I thank you for coming in. I really uh, I find this fascinating, and uh, I hope... Martinsburg takes us on for when my kids are in, in high school. <laughs> Hopefully it's around by then. Thank you for thank, having me. Thank you very much. We're going to take our last break and we will be right back.